The principle of equal partition of energy is a very important concept in physics because it helps us explain why certain ideal gas systems composed of more complex molecules have more internal energy than less complex systems. So let's begin by examining the simplest type of gas molecule known as a monatomic ideal gas molecule. A monatomic molecule is simply a molecule that is composed of a single atom as shown in the following diagram. Now we know from the previous results that the internal energy of such a monatomic ideal gas system is given by this equation. So the product of 3 divided by 2 n which is the number of moles of gas R the universal gas constant nt the temperature of our system given in kelvins. Now let's examine the different ways that our monatomic ideal gas molecule can move. So it either moves along the x-axis, along the z-axis, or along the y-axis. So that implies that for a monatomic ideal gas molecule, the molecule can move in three different possible ways. And each way has its own translational kinetic energy associated with it. This will become important in just a moment when we discuss degrees of freedom. So let's move on and let's suppose that our monatomic ideal gas system is undergoing an isovolumetric process. An isovolumetric process is essentially a process in which the change in volume is zero and that implies that there is no work done by the ideal gas system or on the ideal gas system. So the change in internal energy of our monatomic ideal gas system is given by this quantity and from the first law of thermodynamics we know that that is equal to QV where QV is simply the energy transferred as a result of a difference in temperature for an isovolumetric process and we know that this is equal to the product of N the number of moles multiplied by the molar specific heat when the volume is constant multiplied by change in temperature now this is equal to this and that's exactly what we write in this section. Now notice the ends appear on both sides and the change in T's appear on both sides. So because they are the same we cancel them out and we get the following result. This basically states that for an isovolumetric process in which we have a monatomic ideal gas, the molar specific heat CV is equal to 3 multiplied by R divided by 2. So let's put a star next to it because this will become important in just a moment. Now let's move on to more complex ideal gas molecules. Let's move on to diatomic and triatomic molecules. So diatomic simply means the molecule is composed of two atoms. Triatomic means it's composed of three atoms. So for a diatomic and triatomic ideal gases, the molar specific heat value increases. And this increase has to do with the fact that a diatomic and triatomic molecule can move in different ways, in more ways than a monatomic. So let's look at a diatomic molecule. A diatomic molecule not only is capable of translating along the x, y, and z axis, but it also rotates about three different axes. So a diatomic molecule can rotate which gives rise to other forms of energy known as rotational kinetic energy. Now actually we're only going to focus on two different types of rotations because the third rotation has a very small moment of inertia and so we can neglect the energy associated with the third rotation because it's very very small. So before we go on, let's define what a degree of freedom is. A degree of freedom is simply the number of ways a molecule 
can possess energy. So earlier we said that a monatomic molecule has three different kinetic energies, three different translational kinetic energies, one associated with every single axis, the x axis, y, and z axis. And that means that for a monatomic ideal gas molecule, there are three degrees of freedom associated with translational kinetic energy. So one along each axis. Now, let's move on to the diatomic ideal gas molecule. Not only does it have the three degrees of freedom associated with the translational kinetic energies along each axis, but it also has two degrees of freedom associated with rotational kinetic energy. So it rotates about the xy plane and it can also rotate about the xz plane. So we have three plus two, a total of five degrees of freedom. So it turns out that from experimental results, the molar specific heat of a diatomic gas is equal to 5 multiplied by r divided by 2. So let's move back to this for just a moment. So in a monatomic ideal gas which has 3 degrees of freedom, there is a 3 right next to the r. And for a diatomic gas, there is a 5 right next to the r. And notice the diatomic gas has 5 degrees of freedom. So this result led to the principle of equal partition of energy. This principle states that the energy is shared equally between different degrees of freedom. In addition, each degree of freedom of any molecule has on average an energy that is equal to this quantity. 1 divided by 2 multiplied by k multiplied by t, where t is the temperature given in kelvins and k is the Boltzmann constant. So let's actually determine what our energy is associated with a diatomic gas ideal gas molecule. So because a diatomic ideal gas molecule has five different independent degrees of freedom and each degree of freedom has this amount, then 5 multiplied by this gives us 5 divided by 2 times k times t, where k is the Boltzmann constant and t is the temperature in Kelvin. So this gives us how much energy is associated with every single atom in a diatomic system. So, recall that K, the Boltzmann constant, is equal to R, the universal gas constant, divided by Avogadro's number A. And recall that the number of moles in any system is equal to the number of total number of molecules in that system, given by N, divided by Avogadro's number. These two facts will become important in just a moment when we're going to try to determine the internal energy of an ideal gas system composed of diatomic gas molecules. So before we said that the internal energy of a monatomic ideal gas system is equal to this quantity. Let's actually see what the internal energy of a diatomic ideal gas system is. So the internal energy is given by taking the product of this quantity, the amount of energy that each molecule has, and multiplying it by the total number of molecules. Let's suppose the total number of molecules is given by capital N. So N multiplied by 5 divided by 2 multiplied K by T. Now we can replace K, Boltzmann constant, with R divided by NA and we get the following result. Notice we have 5 divided by 2 multiplied by R multiplied by T multiplied by the ratio of N divided by NA. Now this ratio of N divided by NA is simply lowercase n, it's the number of moles. So that is equal to 
5 multiplied by n multiplied by r multiplied by t divided by 2. So this is the internal energy of a diatomic ideal gas system. And notice in this case, because we have a monatomic ideal gas system and in a monatomic ideal gas system each molecule has 3 degrees of freedom, there is a 3 right uh, next to the N. And in this case, th there is a 5 right next to the N because a diatomic system has 5 degrees of freedom.